I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have, as a basic principle, the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. It falls your lot to be a street sweeper sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, sweep streets like Beethoven composed music, sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. And when you discover what you're going to be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Set out to do a good job and do that job so well that the living, the dead, or the unborn couldn't do it any better. Tyler as a child, um, Tyler has always, always been an athlete. So very high energy, um, smart, um, focused, uh, surprisingly as a child, very, very focused on his, his desire to be a professional athlete. When I had him, he was very energetic. You know, you know he was hyper and he loved he, to hit people. And I quite naturally we put him on defense. He was a all-year-round athlete. Anything that interests him, he would try it, even if he's never done it before. He played football for as long as I can remember. He was in like flag football, and then in middle and high school, he played football. So full of energy, and you know, sports has always been his thing. You know how some parents like to keep the children off the streets so they get them active in different, you know, um, different sports. So I, I played football, I played basketball, I tried track, I didn't like it when I was younger, so I didn't really do track, but um, that's how I got started. And my, my dad had a, a little influence on that as well. He, um, he had a stroke, um, it, was, it wasn't fatal, but it, um, it really messed him up. Um, I wanna say uh, he was actually helping my mom move to St. Louis at the time. Um, and he had a stroke. It, um, the doctors told him he would never be able to walk again. They told him he would never be able to write again. But, you know, he beat those odds. He can walk. He can write. Um, it's just, it left him kind of, he can't really uh, express himself as much as he used to. But, I mean, you know, that's my dad. And he knows it and I know it. He, he loves me with all his heart. And uh, he's done the best that he could to be a father figure in my life. Well, um, Clarence played um, in the early 70s um, when uh, football was still pretty, um, you, you know, you could get kind of rough. He played for the Oakland Raiders who took no prisoners, as they say. All he's wanted is, I want to be like my dad. One day I'm going to be playing football in the NFL because of my dad. So, yeah, that's been 
his thing. That was our number one conversation. He always said he wanted to go to the NFL like his dad did. I'm almost 25 years old and it excites me every time I think about it. You know, how just, just realizing how hard it is to actually, you know, make it to the league and my dad did it. So I'm basically following his footsteps. Tyler Davis was a, was an energetic athlete, a athlete for myself uh, at University City. Uh, high energy, uh, athletic kid who can pretty much play any position. I coached for over 20, 28 years and different players for Tyler, he stood out because, you know, he was aggressive, you know, and you couldn't outrun him, you know, and he was good. He's always doing something, some type of activity to keep busy, to keep in shape to work harder, you know, to build his stamina, all of that. No matter how long it took, no matter what time he got home, even if it was him just goofing around, it had something to do with being active. A lot of times when Tyler was younger, he was not on winning teams. And um, sometimes he didn't get to play when he thought he should have gotten to play. He's never wanted to quit. There was a couple times that I said, well, Tyler, if they don't want to play you, you want to quit? And he was like, no, Mom, I'm not a quitter. The interception he made against uh, Parkway Central, um, that was a school that we, uh, from what I understand, I don't think we beat them in about 20, 25 years. And uh, made an interception down the sideline to pick a pass off, kind of changed the complexity of, complexity of the game, and uh, we actually ended up winning that football game. Football, my senior year was probably the best season my high school had. Um, for a long time, for a really long time. Tyler was extremely hard working. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I truly miss the, the young men that I coached at University City High School because they actually changed the culture and their work ethic. I mean, we had 6 a.m. Uh, workouts. Um, it never was an issue when it came time for these guys to show up and put in the work, uh, weightlifting. Uh, that was something that the kids didn't do prior to me getting there. And Tyler, along with his teammates, kind of changed the way people viewed University City football. And I mean, it, they did a phenomenal job. To this day, we still have people that are talking about um, how those kids worked, how they changed the culture. Well, one thing um, that I admire about Tyler as an athlete is that even when he was a, a young kid, um, Tyler was small, but he's always been a leader because of his desire for the sport and his desire to win. He's always been a team player. So as he grew older, that just um, seemed to magnify. You know, I think every young man wants an opportunity to play in the National Football League, but the first step is college. Once you get to college, you kind of go from there. Here they come after it. It's a boot, but they kick it away from Tyler. And that one is going to go out. Oh, Tyler Davis picks it up on the run. Tyler gets it to the 30. Tyler Davis spins. He's loose at the 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. What a play by Tyler Davis. Describe TD as a player. Uh, TD was pretty much uh, the most, I think the most athletic player um, on the team the two years that I was here when, when he was in college. I remember uh, the first media day when I was um, took over sports information director, I was talking to the SID of the conference and we were talking about various preseason All-American teams and he said there was one publication that didn't even have Tyler as a preseason All-American and he said uh, and this was before I even, you know, knew who Tyler was or saw him play or anything like that. And, and he said that if there's a publication that doesn't have Tyler as an All-American, then it's not a worthy publication because he's the most athletic player. Well, I was a senior. Today he was a freshman. Of course, we're both from St. Louis. I'm from Parkville West. He's from U City High School. So when he first got here, he was just a goofy, 
goofy kid. And I always thought, I'm like, once he get his mind right and get it together, he's gonna be a hell of a player. So he played, he was, I think, a red shirt my senior year, but really didn't play because he was kind of young. He really didn't know the defense playbook. But the year I thought left is when he took off. And I'm like, we would have had him my senior year. We probably would have did some things. He was hardworking, um, very talented. Um, we knew right away that he was uh, uh, going to be a really good player for us. Um, even right away, even on his recruiting visit, you know, I remember him. Um, I remember watching film of him as a senior in high school, and he was just a very talented uh, uh, football player. We he could play offense or defense, and we knew he'd be good at either. Tyler Davis. I think first I describe him as a person, and. Uh, when, when you look at him, you look at charismatic, full of energy, and I think that transcends to what he is as an athlete um, on the football field. He's a guy that's full of energy. He's all over the place, um, a true competitor. Energetic, very energetic, um, hardworking, playmaker, um, just kind of a big kid that likes to have fun and really work hard, though, and, and enjoy the game and enjoy life. Well, TD was a, a tremendous player. I mean, he, but you know, you don't get to coach very many Tylers in your career. Uh, he was a great player, uh, all American status, a four year starter, all those accolades, but just a, a great kid, a good person. I mean, he was a, a, a good leader. I mean, he's, he's what you want in a college football player. Hey sports fans, welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Sidelines, where we bring you the athlete. Today's guest is Tyler Davis from Missouri Valley, NAIA BSN first team preseason All-American. And with me is Kerry Gibbs, BSN correspondent here to lead off the interview. Gibbs, what do you got for us? Oh, you know, we have a great all-round player with us today. As you said, you know, junior out of Missouri Valley, we got Tyler Davis, TD, as he likes to be called. Uh, you know, defensive back, return man, he does it all. Uh, last year, you know, he, he had six interceptions on top of seven pass breakups. This guy really caused, you know, the quarterback some fits. Uh, you know, he stripped the ball three times. He averaged uh, 24 and a half yards per kick return, averaged 14 yards per punt return, scored a touchdown there. I mean, he just did everything. A stat sheet filler, as I like, as I like to call it. So you're telling me if they were to inspect the ball after every game, they'd find his fingerprints somewhere on that ball. Oh, yeah. Somewhere, everywhere on that ball. I mean, he, he was all he was all over the place last year. He is the leader of this defense and the leader of this team, quite frankly. But if you got someone like Tyler Davis that's out there in every practice leading the way, I tell you, I, I'd love to check in during two days. And and I got to ask you, you know, Tyler, <clears throat> talk about your time in Missouri Valley. You know, what made you choose that school? And maybe more importantly, what did the defensive coordinator do? to draw you there? What, what, what are some of the things that your defensive coordinator does that gets you fired up, that keeps you confident? Because like Kerry said, you know, you have this aura about you. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I was a kicker. I want to go play some secondary with you. I want to see what it's like. I mean, I'm getting fired up here just thinking about what your preseason is going to be like. Well, actually, I was recruited by our offensive line coordinator, uh, our offensive line coach. He, uh, they were very persistent, you know, uh, once I got to meet the coaches and everything, I enjoyed them. They were real cool. Came down here. The facility was nice. Um, they just, just had a history of a winning program. Close to home, so, you know, I could still go see my mom and everything. Uh, you know, and I was just ready to go, ready to play. Uh, my defensive coordinator, Coach Rowe, yeah, uh, you know, keeps us going. Just we're running, practice, run, 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 run. Everywhere's running. We do. Uh, I, I hate to say it, his favorite drill is a uh, pursuit drill. Uh -huh. It's not one of my favorites, but you know, we got to do it. Uh, and my coach, Coach Arnold, you know, he keeps us going too. You're only a junior, so I mean, you can. I mean, it's, you know, you haven't even reached your peak yet. I would hope not. So, I mean, we we gotta expect great things from you from you know this season and next season, and I'm sure you know you'll, you'll be a BSN All American, 
come the end of this season and, you know, for a couple more years to come. Uh, and you know, sp- speaking of that, you know, what does it mean to you to be named a BSN All-American? It's an honor. It's a great privilege. Uh, being named All-American in anything is a blessing, you know, just one one step closer to my dream. On behalf of BSN, I want to wish you the best of luck this year. Uh, you know, we're definitely going to be following you. We'll be looking forward to your updates and uh, bsncollege.com. And, you know, please convey that to the rest of the team. I'll be here. We will be here. <laughs> All right. Thanks, TD. Appreciate it. Valley was probably one of the funnest moments I've had. Um, he's he's one of them players, you know, that you want to be able to have around. You know, you love having a teammate like him because he's going to make you go because he's going to be the one that's busting his butt on his on the other side. You know, we played on opposite sides of the ball. I was on one side of the corner, he was on the other side. So it was it was it was dope being able to have somebody like that on the other side of the ball for me. Uh, Tom Pelham, TD, we he been like one of the probably one of the best players I ever played football with and alongside probably one of the most athletic people I've ever seen play football. My time here with TD, it's been cool, man. You know, uh, looking at TD when I first got here, you know, he, he wasn't really playing at the time. He was working hard like everybody else, trying to find his spot on the field. And uh, he was just putting work in, you know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't stop. He didn't settle for his position at the time, you know what I'm saying? And when it was his time to play, he went out there and performed. And, just seeing him battle every day, you know what I'm saying, just showed me that I had to do the same thing when I first got here, you know, and nothing was handed here, so. My time with TD at Missouri Valley, it was a great, wonderful time. I lost for words, that's what I tell you. Describe your time with TD at Missouri Valley. <sighs> that time was, was it's, it's all, everywhere, everywhere. TD, man, he's an energetic person without a doubt, I mean, the guy walks in the room, he lights up the room automatically, man. I mean, from head to toe, with his smile, to his jokes, to his demeanor, the way he acts. And then my boy Ted, his favorite thing is his socks. The socks, his socks is just off, off the charts. Like, we even had even competitions about, you know, socks, who had the best socks and stuff like that. Man, I mean, it, it's, he's just off the charts. As a player, he's, he's someone who's, you never know what he's gonna do. You never know what to expect with him. You know, he's one of the ones, he's a go-getter. So I, I liked, I always sat back and you know, when the ball was in the air, you never know how he was gonna catch it. You know, it was it was just dope to be able to kind of sit back and just watch him perform. You know, at times I know I was locked in, you know, on what I was supposed to be doing, but when that ball was in the air away from me, you know, I just always just to sit back and you wonder how he was gonna go up and go grab the ball. He always had some type of unorthodox way he was gonna go grab it. So it was kind of cool to be able to watch. As a player, like I said, he's, one of the most athletic, he's relentless, he is like, he don't quit, he just constantly keep going. He's one of those guys that get on your nerves if you're playing against him. Describe him as a player. As a player, I uh, you know he's an outgoing guy, funny guy, hard worker. I mean, uh, I mean, it could be a bad day, he'll find a way to pick you up, you know what I'm saying? High energy every day at practice, no matter if it was raining, you know, cold as heck, it was always fun with him. TD as a player was a great player. As a, he's a player that you that you had to watch on the field. You wanted to watch him. Ted as a player is is what I love about Ted. Ted is a dog, and the dog term means that he's a go getter. Like he's gonna sit there and grind for everything. He stole a couple picks from me. I'm not gonna lie, he stole some from me, but. You know, he's he's unbelievable because you never know what he can do. Like, he's actually a player you can sit there and watch and just 
go to buy your ticket, you buy your ticket just to watch him play. Outside of football, you know, TD is one of the realest people that you'll meet. When I first, you know, came here, when I first left from the University of Tulsa, TD was actually one of the first people I met. You know, they introduced me to him, and um, we clicked right there. And um, ever since then, you know, I, I haven't met a person that's been, you know, more realer and, you know, straight to the point, but, you know, someone that you can always count on, and he's been like that since I met him. Before. Describe TD as a friend, like his character outside of football. Oh, man, goofy guy. I mean, you know, funny to be around with. I mean, you can laugh with them, bust jokes with them. I mean, it can be a serious moment. Y'all can still have fun. Just an outgoing guy, good guy. Energetic, always, you know, seeming like happy, on the go. If somebody else down, he picking them back up, all uh, type of person. So. Energetic, hyper, hyper, that guy, my guy. I love, I love that dude, man, I love him, I love him. Because TD, TD keeps everybody going, everybody going, everybody going. And his, like I said, his demeanor is just so, it's, it's, it's just, it just, it gives you energy. Outside of football, he's probably the one of the most goofiest people you'll ever meet. He's just always playing. He's just like, just a goofy person. I had the joy to have Tyler also in class and to see his interaction with other students, I think transcends to what he is on, a, on the football field. And I think that's why he's been able to be successful and where he's at today. Are there any specific plays you can remember about him? I wouldn't say a particular play. I would go into a particular moment in time when, um, you know, we were in the quarterfinals and you know, we were, you know, TD, the, the whole week, you know, he was going through, you know, the migraines and stuff, and it was real, real tough for him. You know, he battled through that. You know, he missed practice and stuff that whole week. But, you know, I know that he knew, you know, he knew, you know, we needed him to be able to play in that game. You know, and he battled through that little bit of adversity. And, you know, he's out there with us, and, you know, we balled, and they took us to the semifinal game. So that was one particular moment that I, you know, I remember. A play I can remember about TDs when we played Baker, when he made a... A one-handed interception, looking right at the camera, and a punt return, running back and forth over the field, and made a touchdown. Probably the very first play his freshman year at Baker, uh, he made it's a diving one-handed catch, and it was probably his first interception of his career. And I remember telling Coach Rowe, I was like, I think we got something special here, fellas. Plays, I mean, shoot, there's so many, man, there's so many. But one play that will stick with me, will always stick with him, first interception, Baker University, going into the end zone, south side of the end zone. And Ted makes an unbelievable catch, one-handed over the guy. I thought it was incomplete. Everybody thought it was incomplete, and he one-handed catch. It was unbelievable. 2013 season, his senior year, he caught an interception upside down. It was a screen play. And he got hit, like he got somebody, they took out his legs, he got hit, and he kind of like did a, like a flip, and he caught the interception, he still caught the interception. I don't know how he still caught the interception. I do remember there was, I think it was against Northwestern, maybe his senior year in the playoff game, he was John back and forth with the wide receiver, and we were sitting up in the booth going, ah, oh, this wide receiver doesn't know what he's doing, you know, because Tyler's going to make this guy look silly. And sure enough, at some point in the first or second quarter, he, you know, picked the pass off, or he made a great defensive play on on a really tough pass that was thrown his way, and the guy stopped drawing with him because he knew right away that there was no way that he was going to be able to beat Tyler that day over and over again. It was just going to be, TD was just going to shut him down for pretty much the, the entire game. So. It was a punt return where he let the ball bounce, and yeah. about four people from the other team, and he ran. Scooped it up, took it down the sideline, and touched down. Is there any specific play that you can remember about him? I will say probably I got two plays. The first one would be at Baker University. It was like a third and long, and they went deep on him, and this guy caught the ball in one hand. It was probably one of the best plays I've seen. The other one was here at home against Cover Stockton when he caught the ball in reverse field like three times before he took off down the sideline. I ain't never seen that in the, on the college level. I had a picture on my wall 
uh, and, I, and I took it down when we did some work, but we're going to put it back up. He had a play, I think it was his freshman year, he had a one-handed diving interception in the back of the end zone against Baker that, that just reminded me he had a lot of great plays. Uh, but that's one that I remember because I had that visible representation on the wall every day in the office. Is there any specific play that you can remember about Tyler? Probably a punt return. Um, I think it was playing Benedictine here and he went from east, west, back east, a little bit of south, stopped, ran forward, stopped, spun, and scored a touchdown. I remember uh, I can remember a couple. The first one I remember is uh, when he was a freshman and uh, we had a scrimmage outside during fall camp. It's kind of uh, the first time they have uh, contact and uh, there was a, somebody, I can't remember if it was a run or a pass play that broke loose, but uh, he came up and, and popped the kid good. It was a big, it was a huge play and I mean everybody, it was one of those where everybody kind of goes, woo, you know, and uh, so uh, right then, all the coaches, we were like, yeah, this kid, uh, he's got something special. I was first team all conference all four years. Um, AFCA All American, uh, unanimous decision my junior year. Um, I was the hack defensive player of the year. Um, four time BSN All American. Um, I've been conference player of the week numerous times uh, the list just goes on Did you notice that he had potential to make the NFL? Day one. Day one. Day one. Right about day one. Day one, I see him on the field. The kid, the guy just does unbelievable stuff that keeps you in awe. And then playing with him, playing with him, just seeing the things that he does, you know, and his work ethic is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, the guy makes plays that a normal human being couldn't make. Like he sit there and make all the acrobatic catches and do unbelievable moves and you wonder what's going through his brain or what is he seeing before he makes his moves. Like it's it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable what the guy can do. I just feel I feel like just kinda when you just kinda just first start playing with him, I mean he was just you could just tell, I mean, his stance was always, you know, perfect. He always worked on his technique and you know what I'm saying? He was always just trying to be the top guy all the time, man, no matter if it was practice or the game. 2012 season, my first year playing with TD, I noticed he had the potential when just like just watching him play and like how athletic how athletic he was, I just knew he could be one of those guys that could like definitely, definitely play in the league. I think continuing to be able to practice with him, you know, and see how seeing how his work ethic, you know, off the field 
you know, at the end of practice and stuff and seeing that drive and that hunger that he had, you know, staying after practice and doing extra work because, you know, you get to the point where you start seeing, you know, some players, if they, you know, be getting a lot of hype and getting a lot of praise, you know, they tend to want to kind of get complacent and not want to work. But he was one of the ones that would always try to stick around and do some extra work. And that's when I knew that he had that drive to be able to get to the next level. Living in Europe was a once in a lifetime experience that I got to actually experience twice. Um, I loved it uh, for the simple fact that there's no uh, sales tax. So what you see is what you get. You know, what you see, what the price is, you, that's what you pay. There's no sales tax, anything like that. Um, depending on where you are, um, my first year I was down south in Germany and the, 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 well, I was in more of a rich, richer city than I was. Um, my second season, but um, down south, the people more, are more kind of like, kind of snooty in a way, depending on where you are. And um, they like to, well, me being foreign, that's funny me saying I was foreign, but um, they like to stare a lot. Cause you know, most most people over there that, that have uh, dreadlocks, they, they have like maybe three or four. They're like real clumpy, it's real nasty. So mine looked re really nice and they were, you know, people would stare and, oh, can I? Uh, you know, some people that come up to me and speak German and it's like, um, I don't really, you know, know what you're saying. May you speak English. Then they'll switch it real quick. You know, they'll speak English. But um, if they tell you that they don't speak English, nine times out of ten, they're telling us they're, they're telling a story. Everybody over there speaks English. Everybody. TD over, overseas was like, you know, my, my big brother, he took care of me, took me in. Uh, I mean, going thousands of miles away from home and being able to go out to another country isn't easy for most people if you, you're going alone. So he was like my, he was my big brother there. I mean, man, we got to travel the world together. We, uh, we went to, I mean, Hamburg, which is a big city in uh, Germany. Pretty cool city. We went to Berlin, got to travel around a, a, a World War II site with, in Dresden. Seeing a bunch of historical uh, monuments. Uh, we went to Anne Frank's house in Amsterdam, which we felt was so cool. I mean, reading about her as a little kid and actually going to see where she lived and where she was hiding was pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, we got to do a lot as far as just seeing the world. Being over there, I picked up, you know, I picked up, uh, I can hold a, a, a conversation in German, Deutsch, shall I say, I can hold a conversation. Can you say it simply? Um, werfen. That means, um, would you like to throw the ball? Would you like to throw the ball with me? Werfen. Learn that from football. Wollen wir ein Foto machen? Would you like to take a picture? Two sentences. My first season there, um, after graduation, my, my senior year, um, I flew over and the team that I actually played for, they were, I want to say they were one and four. And when I got there, um, we made the playoffs, so I feel like I made a, you know, a big turnaround for them. Uh, we, did, we lost in the first round, but 
from one and four to making it to the playoffs is a, is a pretty big deal. TD Grew as a player coming from uh, Missouri Valley, he actually got a chance to shine at another position rather than corner. I mean, he's an awesome DB, but he actually, you know, got got a chance to go on the offensive side of the ball where you can tell from the, the stats, the film, the highlights, that that's where he belonged. He, he killed it at receiver and I mean, was just outstanding. He, he grew tremendously. My second year there, my second season, um, I broke the single season receiving record, um, single game touchdown record. I won the European Football, uh, European Football League Championship. Are there any specific plays you can remember about him? <laughs> I mean, any play that he had the ball in his hands was a good play. I mean, it could be a screen play, a right, like a, a dump off pass right now, a one yard screen, like, it could, and he would turn that to 60, 70 yard touchdowns. I mean, uh, go routes, I mean, that was automatic. You just throw the ball up and, you know, TD's gonna go get it. You could throw, I mean, our quarterback, Blake, he would just really like heave the ball up, just throw it as far as he could and in TD's direction. And, Somehow, some way, TD made a way to go get that ball, and it was it was amazing to watch him run goals. I mean, goal line situations, you could throw him a jump ball. I mean, he's not six six, but he jumped like he's seven foot. Like he had amazing, amazing hands, amazing bounce. Going from college and hearing, in high school and hearing, you know, you, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, and then not to make it, 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 um, it just made me, you know, want to make it not only for myself, but I didn't want to let everybody else down. And um, I, 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 I had to keep playing. I had to keep playing. Um, so when I got the opportunity to go overseas, I, I went over there with the mindset of I'm getting this film and I'm I'm going home. Titi, I mean, you know, he didn't plan on staying in Germany forever. I mean, his his number one goal coming out of college was, you know, going to the NFL. And you know, he had his chances. Well, he had his opportunities, I should say, at the regional combines, the super regional combines, but you know, they overlooked him just because, you know, he did come from a smaller school, but Titi can play with the best of them. And uh, when he went to Germany, that was his goal to, you know, build this film and uh, really just get his name out there, and he did that, but get his name out there, and he, he strived for greatness, and he wanted, to, he wanted to be in the NFL, and that was a place that he always dreamt of being, and I mean, he made it happen. Um, there's players still overseas right now, they've been there five, six, 10, 15 years. That's a big jump from what I said, but it's true. Some people get trapped over there, they get, you know, they get trapped over there because it's so nice, and. When you go over there, you know, you get paid, you get housings paid for, vehicles paid for, internet, food, everything's paid for. You can even travel on them. Everything's paid for. And, but, I mean, as nice as it was, that, that wasn't my, you know, that's not my intention. But it's, it's, it's a very beautiful country, very beautiful. Um, and if I could recommend it, I, I would. If, if anybody, you know, ever gets a passport and wants to go somewhere, don't know where they want to go, go to Europe. My major at Valley was exercise science. So um, my mom um, had a lot to do with that. She'll tell you that story. Um, I actually uh, never wanted to do anything else but play football. So. You know, my mom being a mom and knowing how hard it is, you know, to make it to the big times, um, she would always tell me, 
or you need to have a backup plan. So, um, me, you know, thinking in my mind, if I'm not able to, you know, play football, I want to actually, you know, be involved. I want to be involved in sports. And my mom actually thought I should be like a, a broadcaster or something because I like to talk a lot. But I, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So um, I actually got, I got my degree in exercise science and uh, I became a personal trainer. Team, what inspired you and TD to collaborate to build that program? Me and TD, you know, we came together. You know, we, we, we never had a program, you know, or a facility to be able to call our own. And since, you know, as far as like, you know, to give that safe environment, you know, for kids to be able to, you know, come to and feel comfortable with, you know, so we kind of sat down one night and was like, you know, you know, what if we tried to come up with some type of, you know, youth, you know, youth program, you know, to be able to, you know, offer speed, agility, you know, tutoring, different things like that. So, um, you know, we sat down one night and we tried to be able to come up with, you know, a cool name for it. Um, you know, we came up with the acronym Dream Team. So the Dream Team stands for Developing Real Excellence Among Minors Together Equals a Movement. And uh, we recently changed the name to Body, which stands for Building Our Dynamic Youth. And uh, our mission is to give our, um, set youth, give our youth opportunities to uh, gain confidence, set goals, and strive to become the best athletes or individuals through athletic training. And um, so within, during that program, we, you know, we, we do uh, character building activities um, while we're also doing some type of athletic training, whether it's improving their broad jump, their vertical jump, um, improving their overall strength, their core, flexibility, speed, agility. We, we do all of that. We touch bases on every level. And um, I take pride in that. I take pride in that program because um, it, you know, it's our baby. With TD being on board, you know, it's, it's awesome to know his accolades and stuff that he has now, but you know, just regardless his presence, you know, when he comes into the door, the kids, you know, they instantly, you know, feed off of his energy. And it, it's it's awesome to be able to have that other partner, you know, on the side of you to be able to, you know, bring that extra energy that you, you know, that you may have. Like I, I always relate back to it. Like I said, I'm, I'm I'm a serious person. You know, I always like to get straight down to business. But TD, you know, he, he balances me in a sense, you know, that keeps me where I'm like, hey, you know, it's all right to be able to let down a little, let your hair down a little bit and, you know, have some fun. And, and I'm glad that he's like that because we need that around. I think it impacts them a lot because, you know, TD, just like I do, you know, he, he comes from a single parent home and, you know, we're able to be able to relate to a lot of different kids that may come from that similar background. And there's some that, you know, come from, you know, two parent homes, which is fine. But it, it's, it just gives kids a little extra hope to know that no matter where you come from, you can be able to make it as long as you're being able to put that hard work and determination and you stay, you know, clear to your dream. So it, it's awesome to be able to see him be able to achieve his because it gives a lot of kids that's in my facility hope to be able to kind of get to that next point. He's impacted my children in so many ways, it's unbelievable. They both have so much more confidence when they're going into athletics or, or, or anything, even just life in general. They have such an upbeat attitude and just a good persona of how a man should act as he gets older and taking care of business and stuff like that. It's just amazing. I think that that it, he's a very positive role model for him for one thing um, but also just setting a good example of being a good person a good athlete um, being strong mentally and physically and just a, like I said just a good role model I think for him how do you push you to get better um, he um, Whenever we would do our drills, he would always critique me on the, on the little things I did wrong, so I could always get better. He would always push us, and like, if we didn't win, then we had to do some kind of something, like push-ups and sit-ups. Well, he, he wouldn't let us give up. He always made us do all of it to our best ability. You know, you, you get out what you put in, so the results will show, you know, if I have the formula, 
you have the answer. It's how much work are you going to put in to see the results. And I like seeing results. I like that. Describe TDA's preparations for the league. Um, he's a real focused guy. He takes everything serious, but yet he still has a smile on his face and he can joke around from time to time. But I mean, you would just think like he wouldn't be prepared, but he really is prepared. I work out a lot. Um, I lift weights. Um, obviously, that lifting weights helps prevent injury. It, it, you know, it strengthens your muscles so that your muscles are stronger. Um, I catch constantly. Um, I've got like two bags full of tennis balls um, because if you can catch a tennis ball, football is obviously bigger than a tennis ball. You should be able to catch a football. Um, I do a lot of lot of resistance training, speed training. Um, I feel like uh, resistance training. It's, it's more so muscle memory. So, say for instance, I, I have on a, a, a bungee. You know what I mean? A bungee, and it's I have somebody else like Kwame, he helps me out a lot. So say Kwame's all the way down there on the other end of the bungee and he takes off running. If I don't open up my stride, cause he's already running, the bungee's gonna, it's gonna retract because we have it so far stretched out. So it's gonna, it's gonna retract. So my muscles have to work that much harder to keep up with the bungee so that I don't fall on my face. So when I take the bungee off, it's like muscle memory. It feels like, you know, you're running, you're floating on air. Also, um, resistance training. If I have a band behind me, um, and I'm 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 digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. My muscles are they're pushing that much, they're pushing that much harder to to get to the destination. So when you take that band off, it's muscle memory. They remember how hard it is to get to this position. So then now they're working twice as hard as they would with the resistance band on. And it's I I really like doing a lot of resistance training. We did lateral hurdles. Uh, backpedaling drills, like all different types, weaving, uh, three cone drills, and then we ran uh, sprints with it as well. A day of workouts. Um, I usually lift around seven or eight in the morning. Um, that's before my heavy flow of clients come in, so I'll get that in, um, and then depending on depending on if it's a nice day or not. I'll go outside and I'll, I'll run routes and do a lot of resistance training for maybe two, three hours. I'm out there a long time. Um, but if, if the weather's not, not as nice, um, I'm usually inside the facility just catching, 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 catching. I'll probably catch for hours, just you know, working on, working on my hand-eye coordination. Describe a day of workouts with TD real fun but serious at the same time and then be on snapchat in between our reps and i mean you just have fun with it That's, you gotta embrace the challenge with him and that's how it goes He's unorthodox, like you can't predict what he's about to do. Like, I mean, he got some weird running for him. Like, he can play every position. Uh, I mean, he's just, just a freak, just different. I would say my heart, my work ethic, um, my way, uh, my, my perseverance. Um, you know, I've been, I've been through, it, it wasn't an easy journey for me, you know. Um, Hearing, hearing it all the time coming out of high school, you know, you know, you're going to the league, you're going to, you're going, you're going to the NFL, you're going to get picked up, somebody's going to want you. Um, then getting to college and hearing the same thing, you know, somebody's going to pick you up. You're going, you're going to the league. I can't wait to see you play at the next level. And then for that time to get here, my senior year, um, I was actually talking to the Browns during the draft, um, and. Um, I didn't get picked up. They didn't pick me up during the draft. Um, they traded up for someone else, and then uh, I didn't get any free agent looks. So um, 
I waited for days because they do free agent deals, you know, days after the draft, and I didn't hear anything after that. So um, fr going from college and hearing, and high school and hearing, you know, you, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, you're going to make it, and then not to make it, 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 um, it just made me, you know, want to make it not only for myself, but I didn't want to let everybody else down. And um, I, 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 I had to keep playing. I had to keep playing. Um, so when I got the opportunity to go overseas, I, I went over there with the mindset of I'm getting this film and I'm, I'm going home. Nobody's ever heard of anybody making it from the GFL to the NFL before. And so, you know, me being the first player to ever do that, come on, come on. That's, that's what sets me apart. That's what sets me apart. My hard work, my perseverance, me having to go a different route. Nobody's ever done that route before. I'm the first one to ever do it. So hard work pays off. Well, Miami was numero uno. Um, I had Green Bay, uh, Green Bay Packers, Oakland Raiders, um, Baltimore, San Francisco. It was, it was it was a lot that wanted to actually bring me in and work me out. What name was it for the Oakland Raiders to look at you knowing that your dad played for them? Well, you know, it, it felt good. It felt really good to, you know, tell him that, you know, your your team is, is looking to bring me in and work me out. It's ironic that, um, you know, he has one of the most famous plays in NFL history, and the team that he made that play against is the Miami Dolphins. So. On the eight yard line, and now 35 seconds are left. I didn't know how we were going to get it in. I didn't know what we were going to throw. But never did I figure that Snake was going to pull it down and start running and then flip it. That was unbelievable. Um, I, I'm not even going to lie. I was, you know, I'm a diehard Raider fan, but. I was more so drawn into when I went down to Miami and, and um, the people there and I, I felt I felt wanted, you know. Coming from an NAI, we didn't have like uh, all these, you know, million dollar uh, facilities and million dollar equipment to, you know, enhance this or we get protein from this person and things like that. We didn't we didn't get all of this because so so it's more it, it was more humbling for me, you know. Um, when I when I actually went down to Miami and, and um, I actually worked out with a few of the guys, um, not on the team, but um, there were two running backs, two quarterbacks, two D linemen, and uh, they were all from, you know, uh, actually a few of them were already in the league bouncing around. A couple of them were from, uh, one was from the University of Maryland, one was from uh, Northern Texas, one was from 
Louisville, one was from Syracuse, like, so they, you know, they come into this facility and nothing's new to them. You know, they, those are Division I schools, so they just, tra it just translates over. And I walked in like a kid in the candy store. I was, you know, I'm looking around like, oh my God, what is this? What does this do? What does that do? Can I try this? Can I do this? You know, it, it's, it's just, it's very humbling for me to, you know, come from somewhere so small and be able to be on the same level as those guys. It, um, it just proves that, you know, hard work pays off. It's, if you stick with what you really want to do, you know what I mean? You set your short-term goals and you achieve each one. Your long-term goals, your dreams, you know, your aspirations, they're not that far out of reach. like a weight was lifted off my shoulders because um, I, I had, you know, I had a bunch of teams setting up workouts for me to come in and work out, but Miami was the only team that um, I, had, I had talked to that were constantly keeping in contact with me, keeping in contact with me, you know what I mean? They, they were contacting me, not, not my agent or, you know, my publicist or anybody else. They were contacting me, like, you know, well, how's your Christmas? You know what I mean? How's, how's your week this week? How, how are you doing? You know what I mean? So it, I, I felt like really wanted, like they really wanted me, you know, they really want me in Miami. So when I got that call, you know, you're a Miami Dolphin, that's all I've been waiting on. Walk me through that, that entire day before the call. Okay. Check it out, check it out. That day, um, just a regular day for me. You know, I wake up, um, I teach a class at 6 a.m. Dad's on the go. Um, so I was up and uh, after that class, I, I went back home, you know, took a nap, a little, little nap. And uh, then uh, when I woke back up, I had a text message, um, you know, this is, Blase Blase from the Miami Dolphins. I would like for you to give me a call at this number when you can. So I sat up in the bed for a second. I sat up and I, I, I looked at my phone again. I looked at it. Then my, like, my heart started racing like, here we go, here we go. been working my whole entire life to get to this moment. So, um, you know, whether it had been JFL, the Junior Football League, up until middle school, high school, college, you know, playing overseas, I never lost focus. I, I stayed my narrow path. This is my dream. This is my goal. This is what I'm going to do. I never said this is what I want to do. I told myself this is what I'm going to do. And if nobody else, nobody else believed me, anybody else doubted me, I believe in myself. I, I have people ask me this every day, literally every day. Are you excited? And my answer has not, not changed. I'm, I'm not excited as much as I am prepared. Because, you know, this is the process. It's only the beginning. Just wait on it.
All I can tell T.D. is to keep doing what he's doing. He's done, he's done great so far, and I mean, it's gotten him to where he is now. All I can tell him is do what you do best, and that's play football. Congratulations on your future and all of that. Love you. I'm proud of you. You've been doing your thing, and um, stay focused, stay humble, and be yourself. Just, you know, keep God first, like he always does, you know, and just be humble about it, and just don't, don't like, he, like, he, like he already does, don't quit. Be hungry, be greedy. I just want to say I'm so proud of you, and congratulations, best of luck. I wish you well, and I know you're going to do well. The hard work pays off. He knows what he's doing. Uh, you can't tell that man anything he hadn't already done. Like I told you when you first came out of high school here in college, keep God first, control to control, and the rest will fall in place. And I promise you that, man. I wish you the best. Continue to do what you're doing. You know, I'll be tuned in on the journey, baby. Much love, bro. Stay up. Keep battling, keep fighting. Uh, understand every day is a new day to get better. Just keep working, uh, uh, listen to your coaches, you know, keep doing what you've been doing and uh, give it your all. Don't stop and <laughs> just know that. Then don't stop because, you know, his heart's big, you know, and he's going to give a lot back to the world. I want to say, TD, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. You work so hard, put in so much time. Hard work truly does pay off. And make sure you keep God first. And I look forward to coming to some game. Put them fans up. Yeah, Tyler, keep your head on your shoulders. Stay humble. Um, make life work for you. Don't you work for life, you know. Um, be smart. Uh, make good decisions. Um, stay healthy and wise. Mama loves you. What's your name? Lecho. Who is your G-Bag? Him. What's his name? Mama. Mama. <laughs> what? Tyler. Tyler. Is your G-Dad cool? Yeah. Say, my G-Dad is cool. My G-Dad is cool. Say, my G-Dad is my role model. My G-Dad is my role model. What else you say? I love my D-Dad. I love my D-Dad. Did he give you your chain? No, he didn't. Did he give you your chain? No. The chain that you have, he didn't give you that? No. Uh, D-Dad did. <laughs> Is that all you had to say? Mm-hmm.